Talkshi. Recorded live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the University of Acadia. Tonight, uh, March 30th, 2011. We have some great updates and uh, new insights and discovery. Frank is here with us and uh, ready to take it away. Frank, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Terry. Welcome, everybody, and, and thank you, Terry Lynn, for hosting tonight. Um, there are, as Terry mentioned, uh, tonight, um, Wednesday, the 30th of March, there are some fantastic insights that I'd like to cover with you all. Just before we start, just the normal format, we're going to continue each Wednesday. That is, I, I want to be able to chat for about an hour, and then I'm keen to get your questions. It'd be great. We had some technical difficulties last week, and it would be great to get you to call in. And to call in towards the end of the hour, please go uh, star eight or hash eight, I think it is, and uh, queue up so that Terry can see. Also, if you've got questions, what would be wonderful too in the chat box is to actually uh, put the word capital in capitals question and uh, then I can see those and Terry can see those so we can answer your questions. So let's begin. And I, I want to start with a, a story that uh, came actually on the email today. I got an email from a, from a, a girl in the States uh, and she didn't initially identify herself as, as being Catholic, but she wrote to me and she said, are you guys evil? And it was a very simple question, and I wrote back and said, no, we're not evil. We are covering a range of areas that happen to um, touch um, belief systems. We're covering a number of areas. We're approaching the issue of consumption. Uh, we're trying to bring back some common sense and, and, and harmony. Anyway, words to that effect. And I said, you know, please read and you'll see that there's, there's nothing that we're doing is in intended to be evil. What we're trying to do is, is drain the swamp. She wrote back pretty much straight away. She said, thank you. She said, and then she revealed. She said, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm Catholic and my, my friends and many of my friends are, are calling Roman cult, the Roman Catholic Church, sorry, Roman cult, <laughs> Roman Catholic uh, Church as the Antichrist. And then I wrote back and I said, and it's true. I said 99.99% of, of Catholics are wonderful people. I grew up in a Catholic family, wonderful people. I grew up in a local church and went to a Catholic school and people were nice. In fact, the, the priests were lovely. I didn't meet anyone at that time that I would say is, is evil because of their faith at all. So I wrote back and said, look, the vast majority of, of Catholics are good but you have to remember that a thousand years ago, a very, very small group of people hijacked the faith and that that small group of people have and have always worshipped Satan and that they are the ones that use people as shields. So p please read because in no way, just because you believe in that faith or you are a Christian, can anyone, whether in fact you're a Muslim, anyone ever accuse you of of being evil by association. And she wrote back and she said, thanks. And she would read. Now, it really struck me as, as an example and a good example to start with about the to topic I want to start with tonight, which is, Acadia is not about isolating people based on their faith, based on their history, and saying guilt by association, whether you are a lawyer, a judge, a banker, that you are somehow uh, a, an evil person. Now, if that is the impression, and if in talking with you and uncovering who's who and who was involved, that is the kind of impression we've given, then I want to straight away apologise unreservedly and say that that is something that we need to absolutely clarify. We are not here in trying to attack anyone. We are seeking to correct, discuss, consume ideas. Just as the world we live in is a kingdom of ideas, 
What we are trying to address is bad ideas and ideas that infect people in a way that creates the kind of madness. And, and I'll give you an example. An idea that says you must hurt your children in order to teach them some tradition is, to me, an extraordinarily bad idea, a sick idea. The people that believe in that, I don't consider the problem. I consider the idea the problem. So it reminded me that we have to be very careful here in how we move forward, that we don't end up creating enemies and, and, and groups of people that feel the only way they can respond to the ideas that we're presenting is to be our adversary because we provide no remedy. Now, just as we highlight in the system, and tonight we'll talk about this, where we think that there is no remedy, we need to be careful that we remain objective in spite of any feeling of injustice. Because some of the things I'll be talking about tonight is to say there is in fact remedy in the system that we keep uncovering, albeit the people we're dealing with, judges, lawyers, bankers, appear to be wholly ignorant of it and certainly certainly appear not to be following any rules. But it would be wrong to say that there is nothing there, just as it would be wrong to say there's no law. Of course there's law. But it would also be important for us to remember that when we say about the bar society or banks as being things that need to be reformed or dissolved, we're not talking about the uh, abolition um, of these people having any right to the future. And tonight we'll be talking about some of the ideas that we need to be aware of as we transition. So when we talk about, for example, the bar society and the bar associations, the private bar guilds being dissolved, it's because they refuse to evolve into something that can protect the law in the future, such as a college of judges, a college of counsels, a college of clerks, professional groups. So there's no monolithic, just as there's no monolithic medical association, there's no monolithic group that claims the whole law to themselves. So we have to be careful we don't become the thing we claim is the problem and that we remain always from the perspective of coming with new ideas, better ideas, with competence, as opposed to change for change's sake. So I guess that leads me into the, the first few things I want to talk about tonight, and that is some important changes in the way that we present the covenant. And in particular, the intention of the covenant in terms of the treaties, and a respect and a maturity that we need to see reflected in the covenant when we talk to people that have an existing faith. So I want to talk about some of those changes uh, first. Then I want to get into some of the important understandings that we are seeing and continuing to see with the concept of the executor and the relationship of the executor letters and our ability to use the executor letter and appoint executors in light of the revelation last week that every single court case, every single action against us is a sacrament of penance. I then want to cover some of the updates that's happening with the currency system and let you know the progress of that. And then uh, I hopefully can also update some of the uh, changes that we're doing in terms of writs and some of the loose ends on the instructions, which I know has been outstanding for a few weeks. So it's a bit loose tonight. There's a few things there, but I'm going to try and cover all the new information, particularly on going back through history and looking at, at embedded remedy and proof that we do collapse these trusts, uh, important updates in terms of use of the executive letter, uh, updates in terms of currency. But let's start with the covenant. Now, I'm referring to the covenant on one heaven, on one-heaven.org. And this is what I'd like to start with. I know that it remains a controversy for many, many people when they go to the covenant and have seen the 
article called the Treaty of Lucifer or they go and look at an instrument and they can see symbolism that appears blatant to be blatantly satanic that without adequate explanation and without adequate briefing it appears almost as if this is some kind of wolf in sheep's clothing it isn't it is not and I want to be loud and clear on three things the first is that one heaven is about a unification and about an end of a system that has allowed the control of the planet for thousands of years and that system is a thought form and that thought form is to divide and conquer to divide and conquer and how they've divided and conquered is that they have promoted two teams on a field which they control a team called good and a team called evil and they have been the sponsors and the coaches of both teams and unless we clear that field of those two teams and observe that the greatest evil is the evil of ignorance the evil of arrogance the evil that would hurt someone the evil that would cause someone to hurt their own children that's evil a symbol on its own is not evil the greatest evil is when people hurt what we're doing with symbols in the covenant that ends hell a covenant that ends this division is we're saying whether you claim to be holy and good or whether you claim to be bad and evil hidden whether you use that against us whether you build buildings with 666 whether you create symbols for your com- companies and countries that have a history of involvement in magic it ends because you have no spiritual authority whether you claim to be uh, speaking on behalf of Satan Lucifer whatever it ends it ends now that you can play this divide and conquer anymore it ends it's over and the proof that it's over is that we have the full authority to use all the symbols so when we do that it is telegraphing to them in no uncertain terms that they have no claim spiritual claim to be priests of Baal to be ecclesiastical ordinaries whether they play the good or the bad on us and they've been doing that for millennia it's over now I assure you they are well aware that it's over and they are well aware of the significance of the symbolism however I was reminded the other day when I spoke to someone who has been involved in helping develop the remedies and ideas of one heaven I was reminded of the need to be sensitive and the need to be mature and not simply to take a position of controversy for the sake of controversy because there are a great number of extraordinary people who through their faith and belief in scripture have justifiable trouble when they see Eucadia and one heaven taking such controversial positions not that they doubt the idea not that they doubt that we need to see a change and reform but a concern that there is almost a showmanship in some of these ideas without the kind of maturity that needs to be seen now let me explain exactly what I mean so those words are crystal clear the word Satan and the concept that there is some dark Lord is not the only name that was ever used by any civilization there were many names for dark spirits from Set, Setian, Sabaoth many many names were used Hades, 